Right out, it's time to join this guy here. I'm gonna put in three layers of 600 double bias in here. I just wanna basically fill up this little canyon I've got here. And then ultimately, by putting glass in there, not just a filler, I'm ending up with a nice level surface. And I'm gonna fair it back into this gel coat around the outside. I've got a big lot to do around the other side as well. So I'll get onto that first. Right, uh, that's the last bit. So this is going to take a bit of fairing to get this right. But what I've been able to do is get rid of the dent there. That should fair down to pretty flat. And then it's just going to be basically a really light scrim over the top fairing. I can basically get that done. And pretty much most of that's below the waterline. In fact, here is the anti-foul line off the mould. The mould was taken off the last boat that they made, it was an extension they did, so I was lucky enough to have those moulds to do these extensions. That's why I look around the other side, and you'll see the same thing. And luckily, if you have a look here, basically, so that's uh, uh, four layers of 600 double bias. I put two thin layers in just to fill the fill the gap there, so we shouldn't have too much of a gap here once I remove this peel ply, and they'll be able to sand this all fair, get some fairing compound on it, and then I'll be able to spray it all the way from here, all the way up, and that'll be one piece, and then it should be easier to fair in rather than having fair gel coat and then fair and then gel coat again. I should be able to fair that whole thing in one piece, and that should integrate that all back into place, all in one spot, and not look like it's bits and pieces. But yeah, that's looking pretty nice, actually. So looking down the side here, I've got a couple of little pairs to do. There's a bit of a gel coat spack up here. Now that's pretty normal when you pull a big boat like this out of the mold, particularly because I did it on my own. So I've got a couple of little repairs and I've already dremeled them out. Got one of the port lights in, we got another one up here, ready to cut out. And another one right up here on the bow and a couple of other tiny little gel coat repairs to be done there. But all in all, moving along very, very quickly now because all the hard work's done. It's just a lot of fiddly shit like this. Well, here we are, Zach and I, hard at the wiring, and we only had a few days left to achieve a satisfactory electrical system before Zach and our daughter Ellen flew out to live in New Zealand for the remainder of 2023. The pulling of the wires, the planning, the execution started to take its toll on both of us as we ran headlong towards the impending deadline. Each night at home, we'd check and recheck what we'd covered to make sure that we had sufficiently covered everything for me to be able to complete the job in his absence. Look at this bloody spaghetti junction down in here. <laughs> Luckily, I've got this hatch here. I'm able to get the slack. You need more? Just as I Alright, so the trick is to pull the slack at each. That's it. You got it? That'll be, that'll be great. Beautiful. Right, oh. Okay, so we got that. That's come from down there, up, through here, in through there, and all the way to the other side. And also along, along here, all the way along into the engine room. <laughs> what a job. I just found the bathroom loom um, that we put in three months ago, so I thought I might as well pull that through. Because once everything's in its place, I can start to wire up stuff and you know, get everything out of the way, because I've got a lot of stuff going, about 10 wires going just into that bathroom with that head up in the front. So I've got this um, yellow tongue here now. When I was building the boat, I put in the conduit right into the sink of the bathroom, and that will basically run my 
electrics into this room and then I can distribute it from there. I've got a fair amount of flexibility in this room that I can run stuff around the walls and things. I've just got to work out how to wrap that, but at least I've got it into the room. So our monitoring system, our Victron monitoring system has a Serbo GX um, computer system that runs the whole thing and we then need to put it on a display. Now the nice thing about this is it can be Bluetoothed and certainly sent to our MFD through the NMEA network. So we can actually put it up on our multifunction display up at the helm, uh, we can have it on an iPad somewhere, we can have it on our phone and just because I like a bit of redundancy and uh, they had a five inch version but for a bloke like me five inches just isn't enough is it zach no um i like seven so for all of you guys that have only got five inches i've actually now got seven inches of display <laughs> sorry zach <laughs> um there's nothing like having an extra couple of inches and uh, i've been told that size doesn't matter but apparently it does when you've got a display so we have our GX display here, which is going to display absolutely everything and we can access at any time So if we don't have a phone handy, which is never these days and I'm going to position it down On the wall down here. We've actually decided we're going to put it right here On the side of our module here so that we can come down and just scan it without having to open doors or anything And we were going to put it on our nav station over there, but I actually prefer it out of the way I don't really want to gauge watch all the time Although I probably will, because it's pretty exciting watching your tank levels and your power levels, isn't it, mate? Yeah, yeah you might get sick of it after. I it, might get yeah. sick of it after the first few times. So. so beautiful. Oh, yeah, that's cool. We've got a choice. Yeah, up higher, I think. Oh, actually, maybe not that high. Like, yeah, because yeah. yeah, it might get caught. All right, we're going into the bilges and putting in some pumps. The way we've got this set up is we're going to have a high water alarm. This is our main bilge. High water alarm around about a foot or 12 inches above the bottom of the bilge. We're going to have an 1,100 gallon an hour pump in the floor with a float switch on a bracket. And then we're going to have this extra high water bilge alarm all hooked up to the uh, side of the underneath our electrical panel so Zach's down in here this is where it's going from the bottom down in the bottom of the bilge here this is the center line or center point of the boat and, uh, and we basically set it up so that we have automatic or on there's no off no off no such thing as an off we don't want an off for a bilge so you can get flicked accidentally and then all of a sudden it not come on when you need it and next exactly. thing you know you've got 12 inches of water in there so we've got plus, plus we've got a uh, high water alarm hopefully we're going to be able to rig it so we've got the alarm as well as on the Serbo GX yeah. um, so we get sort of notification sort of manually I guess from the alarm on the panel as well as on the Serbo with our um, Bluetooth mm. we could actually have an alarm I guess go off if we were somewhere else and the boat was sitting alone we know the alarms are going off yes is that right correct yeah. right okay that sounds pretty good <laughs> Sounds pretty confusing but it's a deep bilge yeah, and we've got to make sure it's right down on the floor mate but don't worry if we've got excess wire but if you sort of think how we're going to set it up that'd be great yep. so you can see Zach's position here this is what I don't want to have so I'm going to make a bracket <laughs> Where I can just lift this straight up, mate. I'm going to improve it when you nick off. What do you mean improve it? That's just. I'm going to improve it. To the point. I don't have to look. No, but I'm, we're getting old, mate. It's all right for you. Uh, <laughs> you bloody head first down the bilge, but I'm an old man. Do you need to turn At this off this rate? You, you won't be doing off? much sailing. You might just be motoring with that attitude. <laughs> Do you want to turn the power off? Huh? Should we turn the power off? There's no power. The fuses are all out. All right. See if we can get this to work. Zach's just wired. Zach's just wired up this build. This hasn't. It looked hard. I'm not sure whether it was hard, mate. You ready? Can I lift it? Yep. All right. 
All right. Brilliant. 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 So that's our major build, John. Perfect. Perfect. I don't know why I get excited about hearing things work, but that is so oh, cool. You better. <laughs> well, uh, well, hey, mate, you've earned your lunch. We'll go well, home. About time. The girls are cooking and we're going home. This bugger had me wrapped around his finger a minute ago, and now he's in trouble. <laughs> yeah. Elmo's in trouble. I could not, for the life of me, work out how to wire this up. He had me, he had me beaten. Beaten. Yeah, I'm beaten. And now, Zach, I've, I've beaten him because I've, no, I haven't beaten you. We've beaten ourselves, because I've asked him how to wire this up. And um, I think you're right, it's working. It's I, only the field wire we have to swap. That doesn't make sense. No, I don't like that. If that's what Baumar said, that doesn't make any sense to me. Anyone would think I don't do anything here because I just keep filming Zach. But <laughs> that's the view we're accustomed to each other's asses. <laughs> Stick it up in the air because yeah. we're in the builders now. I, I was down in the builder, he came down and he goes, Oh, I don't like that view. <laughs> he went, Ugh. What are you doing in there? I'm uh, hooking up the main bilge pumps yeah. with uh, both a float switch and a manual override. I don't really know how you're doing that down in there, mate. I couldn't freaking do that. I'd be having head spins. I've already I've done the other side though. Well, let's have a look at the beauty that it is. Wow, that is just a stunning, stunning lot of work, but a stunning version of boat electrics. And check out, he's actually started, he's run out of room, so he's going up onto the floor, up under the seat, which is quite amazing. And we discovered that I had a GX, what is it? What's the modem thing? Uh, yeah, GX modem, yeah. GX modem, which has a SIM card in it, which means that we can play with it at home, and Zach can zip over to New Zealand and start playing with my tank levels and dicking around with my fuel levels and telling me I'm not using my engines enough from New Zealand, which is just ridiculous. Beautiful, mate. Beautiful work. Love your work. Yep, I'm pretty impressed with that. That is so good. Say that again. Uh, on the on the switchboard, bottom yep. right, there'll be a switch that says bilge pump port. Bilge pump port. Yep. Ready? Yep. Oh, and the lights on. Awesome. That's right. working. Yep. That's cool. And then let me just make sure that the float switch works. Put a fuse in here. Working? No. Hang on. Is it in there? Yeah. Perfect. <laughs> He's put it in upside down, just to confuse me. All the labels are upside down, so thanks for that, mate. No worries. I was, uh, that's fine. I'm gonna have to turn those around, you know. All right, that's our uh, fusion Stereo system is going to come through into here and, uh, and then there'll be a nice liner and so it'll be hidden within this cavity here. Gently see if it fits. Don't scratch my baby. Oh, look at that. Beautiful. Yeah, that's cool. I'm gonna put nuts and bolts on it. Nylon wants it at the back. Don't do it now. But when it when it's mounted, you're not gonna be able to undo it. It has been a massive two weeks for Zach and uh, I've had hold of his passport for a couple of weeks. I actually haven't, but I've threatened it a few times. I think we're there. Do you reckon? 
We might as well be, because uh, see you later. He's gone. I'm out he's of here. He's gone for 12 months, and uh, he's going to leave me with it. But I'm pretty comfortable now. I'm, I think we've just done just a mind-blowing job. The system's live, so it's running. It's on. We've got all the data, everything's... Everything's coming back to us. It's uh, it's fantastic. We've done the Balmar alternators. We've wired up all the power that needs to be done, and there's nothing left to say but get out of here, get to New Zealand, and have yep. fun. You've, Good luck. You've worked very hard, mate, and I'm Cheers, so boss. impressed. Thank I'm you. So impressed. He's left me with a pile of stuff here, but everything's going to be installed later on. Um, I've had clear instructions from Zach to forget the wiring for a couple of months and just get as much glassing and painting and stuff done and uh, then we can start thinking about the wiring at the end. I think we've got our system working. I've just got to be careful I don't get spray gel all over my new stereo and USB outlets and in that cabinet there I'm going to be masking everything to the hilt before uh, as I start to tidy up and fair the ceilings and paint the ceilings and everything. But yeah, for now, Ellen and Zach are gone. Monday morning, we're off to the airport. Yep. Good on you, mate. Thank you.